screen. Okay, so I've got this thing here. I'm here with Melina. This is bonus time for those of you who are watching at home. Oh, and what we're going to do is we're going to create not just one, but two histograms. Okay, and we got lots of time here. So I'm going to let Melina lead us here. What am I supposed to do first? I don't know. You don't know what we're supposed to do first. We want to create a histogram. Um, so we're going to compare University A versus University B. These are scores on an IQ test. Okay, we need to make a chart. So insert, do we just insert chart? Nope, we don't see? insert chart yet. See, I told you, okay. I don't know. <laughs> so here's what you got to do. You got to, you, first of all, you have to group your data. Remember a histogram has numerical categories. Okay. okay. So this is, this is a review of chapter four. By the way, I did post this at the end of the chapter four video, we just looked at it and it is there, but Melina said we went too fast and so that's why we're doing it slow today, okay? So Melina is my break to slow me down, okay? So do you remember how to sort, Melina? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, you wanna highlight your data here. Okay, we got my data highlighted and then click on sort, sort and filter and I wanna sort smallest to largest. I'm going to do the same thing for University B because we're going to do these. Now, I want to create separate histograms. You would never put those on the same graph together, but there we are. Okay. Now, what do I do? That's where I thought you inserted. So nope. I don't know. No. Nope. Okay. By the way, here, I will say this. She says, go ahead and insert. I will just show you what's illegal to use in my class. Insert. I should use a different data set. This one might look okay. But there is a histogram maker. You can't use it. For, for one thing, I want five to seven groups. This one only has four. Okay. For another, where does 86 go? Does 86 belong in which group? Is it the left group or the right group? Because see how it's got both of those numbers there? Okay. That's another reason. Your numbers should never overlap. So you can't use this. So you have to create this yourself. So here we go. As we look at this, this goes from 69 to 127, and this goes from 86 to 116. So this has the bigger range here. So you want to have equally sized groups. What if I went from, say, 65 to 130? Oh, yeah, you have to, you have to group them. So you have to it's create your groups. groups. Yeah, okay. same size groups, okay? So my groups are going to be say 65 to 80, no, 65 to 79, and then 80 to um, 94. So, so these are all 14, you can think of them as 14. So is this is- Is there a trick that it will group it for you? No, you have to do this manually. It, the Excel? trick is with that thing, but no, there is not a group. There's no, there's no you have to do this manually. Okay, so the first rule in histograms is create numerical groups. Okay, okay? and then we're going to go 95 to uh, 109 and then 110. Oh, see, so you know what? I made my groups too small. Here, we're going to do this again. We're going to go 65 to 74, 75 to 84, 85 to 94, 95 to 104. 105 to 114, 115 to 124. Now you may want to stop there, but remember they've got to be equally sized groups. So I'm going to go 125 to 134. So that's how many groups there? That's seven groups. So that's, yeah. Now, the thing is, I just want to mention, if you have like a million data points, you're not going to use seven groups, okay? We're going to use small data small sets in this class because I'm not expecting you to graph a million data points. So in my class, five to seven is probably going to be what you're going to want to do. Okay, so now I need to create a frequency distribution. See how this all ties together? Do you remember frequency distribution? What's a frequency distribution? Do you remember? No, oh, good thing we're doing this extended <laughs> review session today. It's the, count of each category. it's the count of each category. So here, people are bad counters. I'm a bad counter. It's I'm proud to be a bad counter. Excel's a really good counter. 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to count all the 65 to 74s, and there's only three. But you can see right down here, it says three right there. So I've got three there. The 75s to 84s, I've only got two. The 85s to 89s, oh, I've only got one. This is a funky graph. 95, oh wait, 85 to 94, I did that wrong. 85 to 94, I've got five of them there. 95 to 104, I've got six. 105 to 114, I have 11. 115 to 124, I've just got one. And 125 to 134, I've got two. So this is for the frequency distribution for University A. Okay. okay. Now, do you remember how to create the relative frequency distribution? That's the percentages. That's the percentages. How do I find the percentages? You need to find the total. How do I find the total quickly and easily? And by the way, you should always leave the gap there because when people put it here, then they think that's data and it's not data and then they mess up everything. Okay. So do you remember the button to press that no, finds that? No. So this over here is, um, if I go back here to home, there's an auto sum button here right there. And then it asks me, is that what you want to add up? Yes, and it happens right, to be right. correct. Sometimes it guesses wrong, but in this case, so we've got 30 people IQ scores in this case. So now how do I find my relative frequency? Take each of those numbers and divide it into that. So take this number divided by that number. Is there anything I have to press, anything special? Yes, there is. I figure that's a trick question. <laughs> what is it? Tell you what, I'll do it wrong and I'll say no. <laughs> and we're going to see what happens because this will happen on the test and then you'll be like, oh, why didn't it work? So that, that equation looks correct and it is sort of correct. But when I copy and paste down, it says oh, division by you, zero. Okay, you want to figure out how to. Okay, so I want one of those to stay the same. Which, the I-5 or the I-13, do I want to stay the same? Um, the 13. 13. <laughs> the I-13. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but anyway. Okay, so I want the first one to be a relative reference. I want the second one to be an absolute reference. I always want the 13 not to change. So you press F4. Now, if you're using a Mac, some of you at home are using a Mac, it's Command T. But on the PC in the testing center, you press the F4 button. Okay? So now, notice that the value didn't change. But now, when I copy and paste it down just like this, it works. Okay? And what should it add up to? We should add up to one, and sure enough, it does. Okay, now, here we're gonna do this again, even though you only asked me about a uh, histogram, but we're gonna do all this to make sure people know what they're doing, okay? okay. What is the cumulative frequency? Um, the two, put the, the running total. The running total, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> okay, so there's nothing above here, so I'm just gonna say equals, and then I click on that three, okay? Now this one is the tricky one. This one's a little different. What do I do? It's gonna be the three and the two. Equals the three, this two plus the three above, not this three. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because when you do the cumulative total, hopefully it will add up to 30 if I do this right. And it did. Now, a common mistake that people do is they say equals this plus this, which that actually still gives you five, but now when you copy this formula down, it does not add up to 30 anymore. Okay? okay. So don't do that. Okay? How you're supposed to do it is you take this plus the one above it. And then when you copy it down, it should add up to 30. 
Okay. All right. Now, do you remember the relative cumulative frequency? Let's see how good you can do on that one. Sum of all the percentages. Sum of all the percentages. So it's very similar to what we just did, but we're doing it with the percentages and that's this time. Okay, so this one's still going to be 0.1, and then tell me what to do here. Um, it's going to be um, J, 0 .6, 0 0.667. Plus the 0 0.1 above it. Plus the 0 0.1 above it. Very good. Hopefully the people at home can hear that. We'll find out. Okay, and what should it add up to at the bottom? One. One. It should add up to one. And it does. So you should know immediately on your test without me even grading it if you got that right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this should add up to your total. This should always add up to one. Okay. All right. So, all right. So that was a good review of all that. Now, how do you make a histogram? That's what I'm here for. That's what you're here for. <laughs> okay. So I could make a frequency histogram or I could make a relative frequency histogram. Okay. okay. Now, how did I do that? Let's do the frequency histogram first. That's going to be a little bit easier. I'm going to highlight my data just like this. Would I want to include my totals in there? No. No, I don't want the totals in there. Okay. So I highlight my data and then I do what? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you started doing this at the beginning. Insert. Insert. <laughs> okay. So insert. Now, which graph should I pick? A bar graph. Bar graph. So I'm going to pick this bar graph here. Okay. And the first one. The first one, the 2D column graph. Never okay. 3D. Never 3D because it's awful. Okay. And then what? Is that a histogram at the moment? No, they have to be touching. They have That's to be touching. How do you make them That's touch? That's what I don't know. You don't remember. <laughs> okay. So you're going to go over here to quick layout. And this one, notice those all touch. So you hit quick layout, you go to this one here, and they all touch. Okay. okay. Now, I need to label my axis titles. What does this data represent? That's what it was, number of people in the university? Or number of These are the IQ scores from two different universities. Okay. Okay. So IQ scores. So these are IQ scores. Okay. What does this represent over here? Number of people. Number of people. Okay, what should I put up here? IQ scores for University A. University A, yeah. Or yeah, IQ scores for University A, that would be fine. All right, so this is what kind of a histogram? The frequency It's a frequency histogram, okay. okay? Now, just for fun, now that you've seen this all, I want you to, well, let's do a relative frequency histogram. Okay. Okay, how do you do that? You're going to highlight. In fact, maybe instead of groups, I should put IQ scores here. That's probably a better label. I don't know how you would do it because you can't just highlight the whole thing. You can't highlight. That okay, so, that so here's the tricky thing that you're going to want to do. Okay, so you're going to highlight this first column just like this. Then you're going to press the control key and you're going to highlight this. That's how you can highlight two things that are not contiguous, not next to each other. Okay. Now, I'm going to have Melina tell us how to do this again. Mm -hmm. Should I give you the microphone? No, I'm good. You just, you just <laughs> repeat. Okay. So tell me what to do. Okay. Now you're going to push insert. Insert. And a graph. The bar chart. And the first one in the 2D. The 2D. And then you go to layout. Go to quick layout. layout and the ones that are touching. Right there in the middle. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to label this. Same thing, IQ scores. IQ scores. Is this the same thing? Yes. No, it's not. Oh, oh this is percentages. Percentage this is percent. Of, okay. okay. Percent of students. I thought that would be better. Of students. And, and still we'll still be university A. Okay. Now, do you feel like you could do that again by yourself with... Yes. Uh, University B? Yes. Okay, show me how. Wait, no. Why am I getting myself into this? <laughs> You're doing the whole class a big favor. They're going to appreciate you. So how do you do University B? You can see you've got it all here. So we're going to do University B right here. 
University B. So tell me what to do. Okay, the IQ scores, you're going to put them into groups. So IQ scores, we've already sorted it. Okay, what group should we use? Um, we can start with the 85 to 94. Okay, so you're saying because with the lowest one is 86. Now yeah. here's what I'm going to say. If this was by itself, yeah, I probably I wouldn't, 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 I wouldn't use the same groups. But because we want to probably compare University A to University B, I probably should use the exact same groups. Okay. okay? So I'm just going to copy this. Control C to copy and Control V to paste. C and V are next to each other. Okay. So, yeah, because I want to compare these directly, I want to see, I want these to be okay. here. Okay. Now, by the way, before we, here, I should move this down here. One other question I forgot to ask you. How would you describe this graph? That, I didn't, I got that wrong on the test or the quiz because oh. I didn't understand. I don't think you went over that before. Okay. So I didn't know how. You didn't know how? <laughs> okay. Does it look like a bell curve to you? No. It does not look like a bell curve. So do you call it a histogram or do you call it a bar? Graph? No, it, it's, it's a, a bell curve is still a histogram. Oh, okay. So this is, it's a histogram. But I would say that this would be skewed left. Okay. Because as I look at my peak here, this tail is bigger than the right tail. Okay. okay. There's more information over here. So okay. this is skewed left. Okay. okay. Now, if you wanted to be a little technical, notice how this is higher than this. Mm -hmm. you, would, you could call it bimodal. Okay, because it's kind of got two humps here, or even maybe trimodal, if you want to be super tricky. Okay, because you've got a, a hump here, and then a hump here, and then a hump here. Okay, now I probably wouldn't call it trimodal. I would probably call it skewed left only. That's, in fact, I would say that's probably the better answer. Um, but let's just change this value here. If this were, say, eight, instead of there, okay? Now I would definitely say it was bimodal, okay. okay? But, you know, especially with the small numbers here, this is three versus two. Yeah, it's not, that's not much of a hump, okay? So yes, I would say this would be skewed left, okay? okay? And the idea is we're looking at our histogram and we wanna see if our data look normal. That's the purpose of trying to do this. And our data does not look normal because it's not a bell curve. Okay. Okay. Now, we don't, bell, uh, the bell curve is our favorite distribution in all the statistics, okay. and we'll talk about why that is more later. But right now, I just kind of want to look at this and say, is it skewed left? Is it skewed right? Is it a bell curve? Is it bimodal or trimodal or something like that? Okay. Okay. So you're not looking for a long description. No, I'm not looking for a long description. So skewed left, skewed right, uh, bimodal. Uh, normal, or you could say bell-shaped. I'd be fine with either one of those. Or actually, let me show you the uniform distribution. Um, if these were all, in fact, I'm going to make these all the same. Here, I'll make them a little bit different. Three, four, here, no. Okay, so that's like your perfect uniform distribution. You'd say that would be evenly distributed, okay? You'll never see anything like that. It'll probably be more like something like that. I'd probably still call that uniformly distributed. Um, you know, there's going to be some sort of variation in there. But yeah, this would be what we would call a uniform distribution. I'm going to shoot my data back the way it was. Okay, so that's how my data was. Okay. By the way, for those of you who are at home and wondering how I got that data back so fast, control Z means undo. And so then you can undo your previous step. You just keep pressing control Z as you need. All right. Now let's go to university B. Let's do our frequency distribution. Zero. 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 Also zero. Okay. Now you'll highlight whatever falls in between 85, 85 and 94, which is a lot bigger. That's 12. The 95 to 104 works out to be 7. The 105 to 114 works out to be 10. Wow, this is interesting. 
the 115 to 124 is one and zero. These are very different distributions, right? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna find out here. Let's do, let's, okay, actually you're gonna control the mouse this time. Okay, so Melina's got the mouse. She's gonna make a frequency histogram. Yeah, <laughs> We just did the frequency. Oh. You're just making a histogram. Oh, and now I'm making it. Make a histogram. I'm not going to oh, make you go okay. through all those steps, but you should. I'll make you do a relative frequency after you create your histogram. Insert 2D bar. Make them touch. Add your axis titles in there. IQ scores and number of students, okay. And that's University B, <laughs> except for how come it didn't, well, I don't know where did you I type that? Know, so you need to click on the, on the word frequency distribution. I don't know where, I don't know, you typed that somewhere else, but I don't know where you typed it. <laughs> University B, now it works, okay? So yeah, so click on whatever you wanna change. Okay, and so now, a couple things. Now, if you wanna be super good on the test, notice here, especially if you're comparing two universities. Notice this goes up to 14, but this one only goes up to 12. So that would be a way to skew to distort your graph, okay? So you probably wanna use the same scale. So do you remember how to change the scale on probably the top graph? Okay. That's not the right way. It was a good guess though. <laughs> so you click on the, on the scale first, and then right click. Then you're gonna go to format axis. Oops, Oops. well she added major lines, that's a, or minor lines, that's fine, I don't care. You can change your minimum to, or your maximum to 14. And now those scales match. Okay. okay, so not only do they match horizontally, but they match vertically as well. Okay. okay? So that, that's a little bonus thing that you, especially if you're comparing two universities. Now, how would you describe University B? Bimodal. Bimodal, definitely bimodal, okay. Bimodal, okay. All right, now can you create a relative frequency histogram? If I figure out the relative frequency, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so how do you figure out the relative frequency? Um, I'll wait to come up with the total first. Okay, come up with the total first. How do you find the total? Okay, now that, what you did was okay, but notice that it didn't put a space in there. Mm -hmm. Can you move that? Just the 30 only? Do you remember how to move that? No. There's a couple different ways. If you want to use your keyboard, oh, yeah, there you go. And go, go back to the bottom line. Watch it turn into, no, not that one. See how it's got four arrows? Mm -hmm. You can actually click and drag. So that's one way to do it. Okay. Now, control Z to undo. Another way to do it would be control X, which makes the Las Vegas thing. Mm -hmm. Go down one and control V to paste. That would be another way to do it. Okay. For those of you watching at home. Okay, now how do you do this? Just one. Okay, you just copied that. Did you mean to do that? No. Okay, control Z to undo. Okay, you wanna create the formula for the, rel what is relative frequency? The percentage. The percentage, how do I find the percent? I don't remember. You gotta start with an equals. I don't remember what you typed in, do I, you don't type in anything, just that. Click zero and then slash for divide, 30. And then I need to, before I do anything, change this, uh -huh. F4. F4, okay, press it. enter. Now when you copy that down, hopefully it will copy properly. Um, 
You don't want to copy it? Do I? I'll just copy this right up here. Yeah, you can copy that one down. Or you, well, you did it right. Or you oh, can click and drag. Already. Yeah, it's already zero. It's another zero, so that was a little it confusing. Threw me, <laughs> it threw me off. Okay, so now, do you want to copy them one at a time? I don't. Go back up. Okay, go back up to just the zero. Go to the corner. Click and drag. Nope. Yeah, that one. Bing. Okay. That's okay. What I missed. okay. And then what should it add up to? 30. No. Nope. Zero. One. It should should add one. up to one. So add it up to one. See if it adds. Just push enter. No. Nope. Click on where you want to put it at the West Hotel line. Now press your special button up mm. at the top right. What? Your top right. Of the box? No. Nope. Over here. Over there. Oh. Auto sum. Okay. See, the reason why I'm teaching you this, and by the way, in my Math 2040 class, it's a time test. They got to know this quickly. <laughs> Okay, you can sit there for eight hours Thank if you goodness. want to get there early enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, you you okay. kind of need to learn those those. Like I said, in my twenty forty class, time is of the essence. You're gonna have as much time as you want, but you know, if you have a job, you might want to know those a little faster. Okay, now create a relative frequency histogram. Just hold the control key down. Insert. 2D, move it over there, oops, press control Z, now move it. Oh, well you moved the wrong one, but that's okay. <laughs> Back over here. Okay. Will you type IQ scores for me? Will you type percentage of students? Okay. And university. Okay. Okay, and our our numbers are different. Yes. So we want to change this one so it's 0.45. Okay. There you go. Format the axis, change that to 0.45. Now they have the same scale. Now if I were you, this is a little picky on me. I would put them back in the right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you can kind of line them up a little better. And just like this, whoops. That's easy to do. Okay, it's bimodal. That one's still bimodal. Now just for fun, do you want to do the cumulative frequency? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Helps me to do it. So this is kind of a silly one, but it is what it is. Well, make sure you know what you're doing, even though this, this data is much weirder than the last one. Equal, yeah, you keep copying things. You don't need to copy it. There you go. Um, and this one's just enter. Enter, right. This one equals. That plus, oops. Control Z undo or start over that way. <laughs> okay, click it again. Plus there. Do I push enter or do I uh -huh. do it now? Press enter. And then I come back now you can copy it down. down. Copy and paste all in one step. Now that moved it. So yeah. Control Z undo. Now, yeah, go to the corner. This one? Yeah, let's see, the, see those two different, that's the cross you want. And it adds up to 30, just like it's supposed to. And you want to do the relative cumulative frequency? Which is the percentage of students. Okay. This one's just control C. No. Oh. Don't you like to copy. Don't copy. Use <laughs> equals. Then this. <laughs> And what you did was technically not wrong, but I want to teach you the right way. Okay, add them up. Does that add up to 100%? Oops, you moved it again. Oh, what did you do wrong? Did 
Did I not click on that one when I added them? You clicked on the wrong thing. So go back to, you want to edit that second row again? I just press backspace or do I need to, or I can press delete. You can press control Z. You got to practice that. Control Z, undo. Okay, so redo this one. This is the formula that you messed up. Even though it says zero, it's, it's not correct. Equals. Click that zero. Plus. That's what you did last time. That's wrong. You want to click the one above it. Oh, this is my right hand. There you go. Okay, that was that was where you went wrong. Now copy down. Bing. Don't worry. Okay. 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 You gonna ace my test? Yeah. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> All right, so you understand the frequency distribution, the relative frequency distribution, the cumulative and the relative cumulative. You understand how they tie together with your histogram. You know how to make a pie graph and a bar graph and a line graph and all that stuff. Oh, by the way, what happens if you wanted to do your groups, say um, your groups, and you wanted to be one to 10, whoops, one to 10, and that turned into January 10th. How do you fix that? A note, because I don't even remember. You have a note. Because <laughs> that's not what we wanted. Excel was too smart for its own britches there. Okay. And 11 to 20. And then nope. I click it and then you copy it. Nope. No? Okay, then I don't know. Okay. So if you get this problem, you're creating a histogram and you want to go 1 to 10, notice there is no 65th month. Okay. So I didn't need to worry about it there. But if I, have, if I want to start with a 1, I'm going to put an apostrophe here, 1 dash 10. And then 2 dash 20. And then, oops, actually, this one would go 11 to 20. 11 to 20. And then there is no 21st month. So at this point, I don't need the apostrophe anymore. But if I wanted to go 21 to 30, it works fine. Okay. Okay. So that's how you fix that problem. Apostrophe. Apostrophe. Okay. Okay. Now, just as a reminder for those of you who are watching this at home, um, remember that back here in our class, oh, you know what? It's not sharing. Let me try this again. Share the screen. Back here in our class, under the homework, I'm pretty certain that I gave you, this was chapter four, right? Homework four, okay. So here's some good stuff to do here. You've got your graphs here, okay. Let me just show you this really quickly. What you can do here, if, especially if you want to practice this, uh, enable editing, okay. So now, by the way, you could actually click this table. I'll just show you this really quickly. If I press Control C, it will copy that. And then if I go over to Excel here and I open up a blank page, I could paste that. Then you don't have to type it in. Okay. Now, what kind of a graph should this be, by the way? Like if I were to ask you, if you had data here, this was on seatbelt use, seatbelt. Use. So would this be a histogram? No. no. This should not be a histogram, even though there are numbers there. Because the numbers are, these these are not numbers, right? No. What kind of data is that? Quantitative. It's qualitative <laughs> or categorical. Do you like that term better? Yes. Okay, so for categorical data, there are still numbers with your categories here. If this was a problem, it should be what kind of a graph? A bar or a, line. a pie graph. Okay, so you could insert. I would probably use this as a pie graph because this is parts of a whole. And then I would say seat belt use. Okay. So it sounds like you need to re review your homework <laughs> for. But the, other, the reason I was bringing this up is um, you can take this stuff here. Um, and then you can 
Well, and I should say this is good because uh, it doesn't say what kind of a graph that you should do, but you should create a graph here. So you can copy this, you can open up a new sheet here, and you can paste it here. Now remember, on your test, you're going to have multiple sheets here, okay? So you can paste this here, and then you can create whatever kind of graph that you're supposed to. Now, if you don't know what you're supposed to do, oh, by the way, I have posted the answer keys to everything here. So if you go down here to homework answer keys, okay, I've got your homework for now. Here's cool because I've got it in Excel and I've got it in Word, okay? So this is what I expected you to turn in, even though we're not collecting homework anymore. This is all of the answers, okay? This is what it should look like. So see, once again, that's a better pie graph. This one, Oh, I wonder why it's there. Um, anyway, so we've got a nice bar graph, or this is a histogram. What kind of a histogram is that? It's a very boxy, looks like a uniform distribution. Okay, so you can review that all again. Um, also, um, if you do want to see what it looks like in Excel, you can also see it here. You can download this. I think I tried to, yeah, so you can see how I did the formulas here for the relative distribution, the cumulative distribution. Um, well, I guess that's the order it was. This is like a reverse Pareto chart, but that just happened to be how it was. And then um, you've got a pie graph here. Um, you've also got problem two, three, four. Well, I don't have five in there because five probably was something else. Oh, five was this, explain this graph. It was multiple choice, so that's why I skipped that one. But um, anyway, so all that's there. Um, so like this is problem six. This is the histogram that we used. So this is a great one here, just as a reminder here. Um, if I do one dash two, it's going to say January 2nd and three dash four. So obviously in the testing center, you're going to be like, why did that happen to me? How do I fix it? Apostrophe. Apostrophe. 1-2, 3-4, okay? So don't, so the, you need to know how to fix that because I will not be there, <laughs> okay? All right, so those are there. So I've got all of the homework, both in chapter four, five, and six, I've got it in both Excel and in Word. So you can kind of look at it there. Uh, these, we didn't really have any computer stuff. So one, two, and three, it's just, it's just Word stuff. So, um, what else is there? So check out this stuff, the online book. You've got the chapters. You might want to reread those chapters to get re-familiar with the terms. Videos and worksheets, I'm going to post those here. Um, I may, oh, I don't have videos there. I'm going to put, the, should I keep the videos and worksheets separate? Yes. Okay, maybe I'll, since that, I'll rename that. This is now just going to be worksheets. Um, worksheets. We did, I'm gonna call this. And um, then I'll create the videos. So I'll, I, I guess, cause the playlist, I guess some people have been having problems with the playlist. So I would just post a link to every video that I've done. I may post some for my Math 2040 class as well. If you wanna go crazy and learn this stuff. Cause mm -hmm. some of the stuff, if it relates, I will post it. Okay. Some of it doesn't relate, sure. um, but you can watch it multiple times. So anyway. Believe it or not, I want you all to do well. <laughs> okay. All right. And this was a extra this was like an extra hour. It's good. I need it. Wow. All right. So there you have it. I will stop this recording and good luck on the test, everybody.